Hello and welcome to Simple Neuroanatomy. We're going to start off really easy with the hypoglossal nerve. It is nerve number 12 of 12 and has two nuclei, one on each side, called the hypoglossal nuclei. These nuclei are in the middle of the medulla and each nerve exits from the front on the same side as its nucleus. See? Super easy! This is exactly the same with the trochlear nerve. The nucleus, which is of course the trochlear nucleus, is in the middle of the brainstem, just a little higher up at the midbrain. So of course, the nerve exits from the front as it goes to its destination. Well actually, this nerve exits from the back of the brainstem. So, if you destroy the trochlear nucleus on the left, just like if you destroy the hypoglossal nucleus on the left, you destroy all the innervation on the left. No, don't do that. Because the trochlear nerve crosses the midline before it exits. So everything is the exact opposite of what I've been saying. Let's move on to the third nerve, which is called the oculomotor nerve. As the nerve implies, it controls the motors of the ocular globes, or the eyes. So, if we were to theoretically take away the oculomotor nucleus, then the eye could not do anything, right? No, but mostly, because not all nuclei are named after their nerves. The pupil only contracts because of the edinger westphal nucleus. So, if you shine a light directly into someone's eye, and it does not contract, then you can tell them they have an edinger westphal palsy. Please do not tell them that, because they might have a very serious problem with their optic nerve, which conveys the visual input from the ocular globes. Or, they could be using cocaine. Speaking of the nucleus names, is the nucleus of the facial nerve really called the facial nucleus? Yes, yes, of course. If you're talking about the facial motor nucleus, which motorizes the face, but not if you're talking about any of the other things that the facial nerve does. Better luck next time. So the facial motor nucleus controls the face, but on which side? To find out, let's look at the patient who's drooling, but only on the right side. So that means that you can assume that the lesion is in a nerve coming from the facial motor nucleus on the right. But that's wrong in about 95% of the time. Because most lesions occur in the brain, not in the nerve itself. So where in the brain? Well, obviously in the motor cortex. So, if you have an ischemic insult that affects the right motor cortex, you will drool on the right side of your face. Not quite because you forgot that all motor cortex neurons cross the midline. So right motor cortex neurons go to the left facial motor nucleus. So, to make a patient's whole right side of their face droop, you need to give them a stroke in their left motor cortex. Hmm, not quite. They will actually only drool on the right side, but they can still raise their right eyebrow. That's because the facial nucleus has two parts, an upper part and a lower part and each upper part gets signals from the right and the left brain. And now we move on to the best part, the tracts. Where most nuclei have just one nerve leaving at one brainstem location, the trigeminal nerve dared to be a bit more advanced. First, you should know that the trigeminal nerve has three branches and three nuclei. To make it easy to remember, nerve scientists have called it cranial nerve 5. But the tract doesn't just have fibers for nerve 5, it has 4. Not nerve 4, that's trochlear, but 4 nerves. Cranial nerves 7, 9, 10, and 5. Ah! What type of information is in this tract? Well, it has all the fibers that tell you where your face is, what is touching it, and if it vibrates. All these fibers go to the principal nucleus of 5. So. If a Catholic school nun took a hot iron, put it on your face, and vibrated it, where would all the information principally go? Well, pain and temperature principally go all the way down to the spinal nucleus of five. But that's a totally different fiber type of vibration. Vibration is a beta. Pain is a delta. A delta what? An a delta fiber. So, if a person is looking for an a beta fiber, Tell them to look 
only in the principal nucleus. No! Why would you do that? Vibration from the ear is not just cranial nerve 5. They might be talking about cranial nerve 7, 9, or 10. So, how do you know which is which? I don't know, actually. You just have to, like, know it. Because I know it, and so you have to know it too. Are we done now? No. There is one more track we must discuss. Historically, this track here was called the gustatory track. And as you know, in English, gustatory means taste. So, the gustatory tract has only one function, taste, which is why it's also called the solitary tract, right? Well, if you think like that, most of your patients will die because you didn't consider a second function of the solitary tract, which is GVA at the aortic and carotid bodies, which is much more important than taste. Because, I mean, who cares if you can't taste your Lakshmi auntie's curry if you can't also auto-regulate yourself out of hypovolemic shock? And there's much more to learn about, but we're out of time for now. But you will have to learn all of this by the next time. It's simple. Every neurologist knows all of these things and they never get it wrong. And you're not dumber than every neurologist, are you? Are you? And if you don't feel that you've mastered all of neuroanatomy, just wait till the next episode. Goodbye.